Yeah, dude. Actually shocked. Full trigger! Ah! Are you kidding me? Full trigger! Oh my god! So this little uh, MJX Hyper Go, it's the H14BM. I'm very shocked. It's a great little truck, but I think once you get under the hood is is when you start to, man, how do I uh, how do I explain this? These trucks aren't necessarily known for being very good at repair, meaning a lot of times it, it takes more time and thought process to an extent to where when you take one of these things apart, it's it, they're not wood screws, but it's like they've used wood screws. You know, it's, it's a very coarse thread Phillips screw, so... The hardware itself isn't necessarily the greatest. You got to use really a good drive that has good engagement. Uh, granted, most of the time you're not going to strip anything out. I think with the exception of once you get to potentially the motor mount, because they don't use a Loctite, I think they use like a super glue. Some kind of like industrial grade China super glue that just does not come apart unless you introduce a lot of fire. And if you do that, you're literally taking everything plastic away from that area because you need a pretty good amount of fire to uh, break it free. But um, we're here just to check out the condition, uh, see what really happened when I had that slight little accident kind of twice. The second time, man, I just, I don't know. When you look at the video footage, when I slow it down after it hit that rock, the amount of, or I should say, the little amount of damage. So we're going to check that shock. I did um, smash it off before I took it out of the car and brought it inside. So I didn't bring too much dirt in here. It still does have a bunch of dirt on it. But I, I did want to see, you know, did I bend that shock rod? And obviously the uh, the little shock end is snapped off. So do I have something here, which I know I do. Do I have something here that I know that can fix it? That's where I wish Hobby Quarters was right down the street. Because if Hobby Quarters was right down the street and not an over, like over an hour away, I could drive there today and see if they've got what I need. You got what I need. Sorry, I, I, I just, in a, I'm just in a good mood. Because of that dang mini bike. But anyways, um, yeah, you could probably find like a, a shock rod end, something like this. You could probably find something like that. So maybe like the end, the ball ends and stuff like that that could potentially break. And the fact that this thing does come with parts that are in the box, like upper and lower control arms for the front and back of this entire rig, which is pretty cool. So yeah, let's, um, let's see what's really going on with this thing and get it repaired because this thing, this thing will do great at a skate park. The only thing that I'm not liking is the differentials they are way too wide open they seem to cause that issue with the massive amounts of diffing out Full trigger! now granted that's when I had the 3s unlocked so maybe if I put it back on 2s with the 3s pack that's how the CSE works if I put it back on 2s with the ESC doing the five button press. Could that have made the experience a little bit better? I think it could have, but the terrain over at Diamond Dust is still just way too much. So let's just get this thing fixed. Take it over the Diamond Dust as is. I'm not gonna blow apart the differentials yet. Take it over the Diamond Dust. Take it over to the skate park as is and see if this thing is skate parkable between the two and then unlocking that 3S function with the five button clicks. Let's see what's going on with this thing. I am not sure. If he is going to make it to his house. He's way over there. We'll see what he does. He, he might travel all the way. His thing is way over there. So yeah, even though the body fits on, during a crash, the body is going to fly off. The body pins, I can't figure out why they can't figure out, given better body pins, something that wouldn't constantly fly out. I understand that's why they give you 14,000 body pins in each pack. Oh, you're not seeing this. I understand that's why they keep, uh, yeah, so that was already unplugged. Good thing. But um, I can see why they give you 14,000 body pins in these kits because the body pins are usually gone, like gone in seconds. What do they say? There used to be a show called Destroyed in Seconds. So you can see right here, 
we broke the uh, shock rod end. So, and I'm hoping, yeah, I can see that the shock rod is bent. Ooh, I even bent the spring. I'm gonna see if I can fix this. This is just a cheap little car. We'll see if I can fix that shock rod end. So you really should think about getting yourself a set, something similar to this, that has like all these uh, sizes. What it does, it just gives you a better way of uh, sometimes taking these things apart. See, now this has a nice tight engagement on that screw where, so the tools that they give are what can cause stripping. So get yourself something that will make it so that you don't strip out the uh, screws because these are all Phillips. They've got us somehow. Wow, that isn't a, that's not a coarse thread screw. That's a fine thread screw. So you can definitely see we've got a little bit of a issue here. So that's not the, uh, <laughs> that's not the camera. So let's go ahead and just pull this back, take off the end, pull the spring off. You can see the spring got mangled. Looks like the rock actually struck right there. So bend that and then rebend this. Look at that. The spring is right back into shape. Not perfect, but close enough. And you see that shock's got definitely a bend in it. <laughs> that is definitely not accentuated. That bend is actually that bend, so. I just wanna clean this whole thing the best I can here. The way this went, I'm gonna give it an attempt to straighten it right here. So let's see how easy this metal bends it doesn't bend easy actually so i did just take some of that curse out i'll lay out a paper towel here i wish there was a way to reclaim this fluid i wish there was a way to reclaim this fluid there's got to be a way just so i can pour it back in so i've got this little cap right here I take the fluid out and pour it into that um cap right there that way i can just reuse the fluid so it is a plastic body with aluminum parts. Whoa, what in the heck is that? Wow, check that out. There's a metal disc that sits on top of that bladder to give it like a uh, better sealing. That's kind of neat, dude. So it was suction cupped in there. Look at the fluid. Look at that, man. That is some thick fluid. Wow, that's some very thick fluid. Look at that stuff, man. That's extremely thick fluid in there. I'll end up topping it off uh, with some fresh fluid. Get my fingers out of the way here. Ah! <laughs> Dude, that's almost like diff juice. Now that we get that done, I'm gonna unscrew this. Keep this fluid out of here. I'm gonna unscrew this base. I'm not sure if this base, the base should have like a compression of um, a little seal. So, and it does. All right. So, I'm gonna grab the shock rod, end very carefully, my pliers. I'm gonna see if I can spin this off by hand. And it does. So taking the broken end off, and again, trying to keep everything as clean as I can. Unscrew this and pull this off. What that's going to do is allow the bent, the bent piece. Now ah, look at the O-ring right there. So this should allow me to be able to take this out without damaging um, stuff inside. So there we go. So there's your piston with a little pin. So it's got a piston with a little pin on it. Clean that off. Wear gloves if you want to be... Uh, Proposition 65 compliant. We don't do that here. So I'm gonna pop that little pin out. Pull the piston off. I can see where the bend is. And I'm gonna make an attempt to take that bend out using my vise. All right, so I just took it over to my uh, Vever welding table and I was able to get that bend out by giving it some light taps. Now, the only thing that happened, it's not completely like you could put a straight edge on this and you'll still see there's the very slightest amount of um, bend to it. 
it's really not going to matter. I took the majority of that bend out, which it's killing me because I can still see there's a slight little bend. It's so damn slight. It's like right there, dude. I'm going to now polish the shaft. I'm going to use this right here, which is a scratch and swirl remover. Here, I'll show you. It should leave. Let's see if I can show this real time. So I'm going to put this in my chuck. So just to kind of hopefully show you how straight it is. It's not too bad. Take a little bit of this scratch mover, put it on there. And what this is going to do is take any of that, um, hopefully take any of that stuff on there. There should be some uh, material on here. See the black? And all that's going to do is just polishes the shaft so that um, the little micro <laughs> micro scratches that were on here at least are now uh, polished off. So, and I think we're going to be all right with this. This is just a cheap little uh, RC car. Go ahead and put this shock together right now. There is a little O-ring right there. The piston, just seeing if there's like a up or a down. Doesn't look like there's an up or a down. Got the tiny little pin. So working on this thing, man, you got to have yourself some good eyes. Got a piece of paper towel in there. Take this and drop that down into the hole. So a little double stack. Pull that through. Take that little washer thingamajigga. And then take your bottom compression cap. We'll screw that back in place. Nice and tight. And then we can take the shock fluid that was in there. Ah, it's going to take forever. I'm just going to go ahead and put new shock fluid in it. I can't wait. So the shock fluid that that thing had in it was really thick. And what I usually like to do is uh, test. Dude, this is like diff juice. That's super thick. That's literally like diff juice. Holy smokes, man. 25, 60. Wow. That stuff's wicked thick. That's really almost like having... It's almost like 10K. Dude, that's like 10K. Well, maybe not 10K. Uh, yeah, 10K might be too thick. <laughs> wow, I don't have shock juice for this thing, I don't think. Looks like I'm missing a couple of uh, bottles of shock juice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, 60 weight that I've got here. It's not going to take much to fill this thing up. So, it's a little bit too much. Suck some of that out of there. Okay. So make sure I get the air bubbles out of there. With such a uh, thick shock fluid. So what I'm going to do is push this all the way to the top. Put the cap in and then pull it down to create that seal. Put that little cap that they've got on there and then throw this cap on there. Making sure that I don't cross thread anything. Give it a nice crank. That's it. That's nice. Okay. That works good. All right. So, shock shaft is rebent. It doesn't mean that this is going to survive. And I need to get the end out of there. So, Phillips screw. This screwdriver definitely has very good engagement into this. So, it'll be interesting to see. What do we got here? Do we have coarse thread? Or is this also a fine thread? This looks like it's a fine thread as well. The way this thing's coming out. Let's 
here. So, let's see if these screws are the same. They are the same. So, between the top and bottom, the screws are the same. Pop a little end out. And here's the other end of our broken piece. So, all I need to do is just grab a shock rod end for this thing. Put the shock rod end back on. Slip this thing back in place with its re-bent spring. And then, um reinstall it in the truck. I was able to find a shock rod end and it's from a similar-ish company. It doesn't fit exactly like the original, but the sh uh, spring compression is set up exactly the same, so I'm not worried. So, and if you're curious on which it came from, it came from this. And this is an all aluminum bodied shock. So I was kind of torn because I was thinking, oh, this potentially could be an upgrade. So at least I've got um, a separate set of, set of shocks. The bore is seemingly about the same. Give or take like one or two millimeters, it kind of looks like. Um, but this end didn't really fit snug. Because this piece is very slightly thicker. So the shocks that are on this might be an upgrade. So if this passenger side or right side fails, I'll kind of know that the parts that were in here were a slight upgrade. That took a nasty hit. So let's just get this installed and, and see how we're looking at as far as ride height. And this is where it would help if I had a tiny little driver. I just want to make sure that this goes in good and buried. Take care of the front. Making sure that the standoff section, so it does have, so it does have a standoff towards the back. There we go. Good as new. Back to being able to perform. Now, I did want to check and see how the arm looked, man. Fortunately, well, unfortunately or fortunately, that rock hit exactly right there in that location, which obviously took out the shock. So, amazingly, this thing, no binding, no cracks, pin is nice and free. Just, um... Pretty shocked. Bull trigger! Ah! Are you kidding me? Bull trigger! Oh my god! How this thing handled that. Looking at this RC car and seeing how easy that was as far as a repair goes. I think it's when you dive into the differentials is when you're going to have a problem. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to get that skate park experience out of the box. I want to see what is this thing actually like when you take it out of the box because a lot of times that's probably where a person's going to take a vehicle like this. Now, once I tune the differentials, I feel it'll probably, I mean, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping it will do a little bit better on flatter kind of dirt terrain. Now, Diamond Dust definitely wasn't the greatest place to take it. Could I have found some areas? Uh, you know what, man? Diamond Dust is a very rough place. And I don't think the soil is really kind of designed for a vehicle, a vehicle that's as small as this. I mean, th this thing is great. To an extent, you gotta just realize that this is not gonna be an indoor vehicle, especially on the 3S kind of deal here. 2S, uh, same thing, man. Because this uh, radio, I don't even have the radio here. Because the radio or the electronics, the receiver, just has that uh, delay, it's very noticeable. The delay is too much. So driving this thing indoors is not going to be a wise choice because there's going to be baseboard damage, wall damage. If it hits the fridge or the dishwasher, probably dent the front of the dishwasher or the fridge. So don't be doing that. So anyways, this is RC Guy Garage and this is just showing you, amazingly, the durability of the MJX HyperGo H114BM. Is this a car that you would buy? Hold that thought because when you see what it takes to get into the differentials, I think that's where a car like this, it's not really designed with uh, easy repairability in mind. It's almost like dealing with a North Star engine.
You know what I'm talking about, man. Leave a comment in the uh, leave a comment in the comment section if you know what I mean by a North Star engine. So yeah, there's a lot hotter uh, vehicles to work on, but there's there's one little thing in that engine that kind of <laughs> was like a head scratcher. So anyways, uh, I'll be out ripping it up today. What about you? What are you doing today, man? Seriously, put a comment down below. What are you actually doing on this day today? What's today? Saturday or Sunday? I can't remember. I'm hoping that it's Saturday. So. Like I used to always say, just get out there and rip it.